Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In the past few tutorials we've learned some theory about MVC and about STRATS2 and we've also set up a project using a STRATS2 library. So in this tutorial we're all set to develop a bare bones STRATS2 application. So just to quickly recap what we've seen so far, a STRATS2 MVC framework and an application that uses the STRATS2 MVC framework would consist of some important components one is the struts XML and uh, the interceptors. We have action classes and we have JSPs that use tag libraries and of course action classes call certain business service methods to do the actual work. Uh, this is an overall uh, high-level picture of a struts to MVC web application. But since we're developing a small bare bones starts to application in this tutorial, we're gonna to stick to the essentials. We'll try to remove some of the elements over here initially and we'll learn what they are and we'll add them later. So the first thing that I'm gonna remove now is the business service classes and the business service methods. Ideally what would happen is your starts to uh, classes and the, you know, the, uh, the action classes would be like a view layer in front of your business service layer. So you, say you have a business service layer that performs certain actions, the view layer, which is comprised of the starts to MVC layer, would be talking to the business service to get the actual work done. So that is an ideal situation, but in this scenario, in this application, we are not going to be having any business service classes. The action class will just say, you know, it'll print a hard-coded message this is just to start and then we'll see how to integrate with business service uh, methods later on. And uh, let's take the JSPs. We're not gonna use any tag libraries for now. We'll just have a simple JSP that again prints a simple static message. So we have a simple message, static message printed in the action class. We have a simple static message printed in the JSP, so we don't need any of this. And the third thing that I'm gonna eliminate are the interceptors. Well, we're not really eliminating because interceptors uh, are included in our starts application by default. And if we don't do anything, they're gonna be integrated in a default setting. We can configure and override the default setting and we're gonna look at what interceptors are and how to override the defaults later on. But for now, we're just gonna ignore this, but uh, it is gonna be there by default, so we don't have to worry about that at this point of time. So having eliminated all these components, we are left with three main components the action class, the JSP, and the starts XML. So the main components are the action class, the JSP, and the starts to XML. So these are the three components that we're gonna write in our simple starts to application, and we're gonna see how they interact with each other and they talk to each other. So this is gonna be a high level overview of our simple web application. So we're gonna develop these three components now. So most of the interaction between these three components is primarily carried out by the controller and we can we configure how the interactions happen by using the struts XML. So we're gonna look at that first. We're gonna learn what the struts to XML does. The struts to XML is concerned with taking a client's request and then finding out which is the action class that needs to execute. So this is similar to what we've seen in servlets. In servlets, you have the web XML. And what the web.xml does is it has configuration about a particular URL and a particular servlet. So if there is a particular URL request coming from the client, then the web.xml will know which servlet needs to be called to address that particular request. So depending on the URL, the right servlet is and, and the right method of that servlet is called. So struts to XML does something similar, but here we do not have servlets. We actually have action classes. So struts to XML, it controls the execution flow of the request. And what it does is it maps a URL, an input URL to action classes. So we look at what the methods of the action classes are, uh, you know, in a little while, but the primary goal of this mapping is to take the input URL of the client. The client makes a URL request and then it maps it to a particular action class and a method of that action class executes to serve that client request. The second thing that the struts to XML does is it also maps to JSPs. And this is something that we're gonna look at in a few minutes, but let's focus on the mapping between the URL and the action class for now. Let's say I wanna write an application that, uh, you know, that fetches 
uh, tutorial websites. So you want to get a list of tutorial websites and I'm writing a web application for that. So I can have a URL to an action class mapping like this. So let's say I have published a URL in my web application called get tutorial. So it's going to be HTTP mywebapp.com or whatever slash get tutorial. Now what I'm going to do is in my struts to XML, I'm going to map it to a tutorial action class. So I'm going to write an action class called tutorial action. And then I'm going to say whenever any client, whenever any user submits this URL request for this URL, get tutorial, execute a method of this action class. So this is the URL to action class mapping that I'm going to specify in my struts XML. And of course, this does not have to be one. You can have multiple mappings like this. Say I have a couple more URLs. I have a get books, which uh, fetches all the books that a user is interested in. And I have a book action that uh, takes care of getting that response. And I have a get seminars URL. And then I have a seminar action that addresses that URL request. So I can have multiple URLs mapped to multiple action classes. And this is the information that I will store in my struts to XML. Again, it's analogous to uh, web.xml uh, mapping URLs to servlets, but there are a few differences that we're going to look at in a little while. So again, this a little, little picture about this concept. So a client makes a request. Now what the struts XML will have is the URL, which the client has requested, and it's going to look up which action class needs to execute. And then it's going to call a method of that action class. So this is the first configuration that we're going to make in our struts XML. Now the question is, which method of the action class needs to execute? In the servlets example, what would happen is you have HTTP methods. You have a HTTP get or a HTTP post. And then based on that, you would have different methods in your servlet, which says, uh, you know, a method like do get or a method like do post. And then, uh, you know, the servlet container has its job very simple, you know, depending on the request. If it's a get request, call a do get. If it's a post request, call a do post. But in this case, we have something slightly different. We have action classes and they are not actually tied to the get or the post methods directly. So how does uh, the struts framework know which method to call? Well, there are a couple of configuration items over here again, but by default, there is a method called execute. So if you're writing an action class, if you have a method called execute, then that is the method that is called when you do the mapping. So we can have other methods configured when we look at them later, but right now we're going to stick to the default execute method. So what's going to happen is whenever a client makes a request, say or my client is making a request for get tutorial, it's going to look at the action class, which action class should I call it's tutorial action. Then it's going to execute the method called execute. So this is the default method that the struts framework calls whenever there is a request. So now with this configuration in the struts XML and with this action class, we have an initial flow established from the client request to a method execution. This is not sufficient to have a complete request response uh, cycle to, to execute. But uh, this is something that we can get started on. So let's open up our Eclipse and at least code the first path that we understand so far. Okay, so I have my Eclipse open here with the default uh, web project. Of course, we included our starts to library in the previous tutorial. And it has a web directory which has the important web.xml. And I think that's about it, nothing else. Uh, the web.xml has a few welcome file lists, index, default, all combinations. Unfortunately, none of them are there in this project at this time. But uh, let's not worry about that. What we'll do is we'll focus on um, the struts XML and the action class. So those are the two things that I would like to create in this project. So let's start by creating the struts XML. I will create the struts XML inside the SRC folder. It has to be inside the class path. And um, I can create it in the SRC folder. Let me do that now. I'll choose new, other, I want an XML file. I'll choose XML file here. I'll call this struts.xml. 
and finish. Now this is the blank XML file, of course, with the header. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy a small snippet of the struts XML from somewhere else. I'm gonna paste it over here. So this has the doc type and uh, the DTD. So this is a good starting point for us. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna introduce the struts tags. So every struts XML will have the starting and closing struts tag. So all our configuration is gonna be in between these two tags. So between these two struts tags, we'll specify the mapping between a URL and an action class. So let me go ahead and create an action class also. So I'll uh, click on source, new, let's say class. Uh, I'm gonna use the same um, the use case, a get tutorial URL calling a tutorial action. So I'm gonna create this action class in my usual package. And I will append action to it. So all my action classes are gonna go into our Kaushik Java Brains action. I'll call this tutorial action and click finish. Okay, so in my tutorial action, we need to have a default method called execute. We already discussed about that. That's the method that is gonna get called when struts reads that a tutorial action has to get uh, triggered based on a user request. So I'm gonna create this execute method over here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this a public and I'm gonna put a return type as string. We'll look at why this is string in a little while, but uh, this is gonna be my signature for the execute. So this has to be the signature for the default execute that the struts framework triggers. So you have to have a public string execute. And again, as I said, we're gonna look at the reason why it's a string in a little while. So I'm not gonna do anything much over here. I'm just gonna you know, do a sysout and uh, I'm gonna say hello from execute so that we know that the execute method has been called. And of course I have to return something. I'm gonna return a blank value as of now because we still haven't covered the significance of this string return type. We're gonna look at that in a little while, but this is good for, uh, for starting. So I have an execute method which returns a string and I'm just printing out something so that I can know from the logs if this method has been called when we uh, come to a point where we execute this project. So now in my struts XML, now I'm not, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, you know, I'm gonna map a URL to this tutorial action. So there are a couple of tags that I will add to my struts XML now. The first tag that I'm gonna add is called the package. I have a package, name is default, and it has an extends, uh, and it extends struts default. This is again something that we're gonna look at in a little while, so let's not worry about that now. So I'll just close the package tag here, okay? So inside the package tag is where I'm gonna be doing the mapping, and uh, again, we're gonna look at the significance of this package tag in the next, well, maybe not next, but in the subsequent tutorials. So here, now let me specify the mapping. I wanna map get tutorial to tutorial action. This mapping is called action mapping in the struts to language. So this is done by using an action tag. Now an action tag has something called as a name, which is the name of the action, the name of the request that a client makes in the browser. So I will call this get tutorial. So this is a request that the client makes in the browser. Of course, there are, it has to be a full URL for the client, but here the root context of the web application is already decided. So I'm just gonna use this name to specify the, the rest of the URL after the root context. So get tutorial is gonna be the URL. And then 
what I will do is I will use the class property of this action to specify the class name, which is tutorial action over here. So I'll specify the name. Tutorial action. So this is my class to which a URL get tutorial is mapped to. And of course, the default method that executes is this execute. So now we have mapped the URL to the action that we have seen. Uh, now, if I run this project, I'm probably going to get a million errors because there are a lot of things that we have to do yet. So this is just the first step. And this covers what we have seen so far in this picture. We have a URL to the action class mapping. So this is happening fine now.